It's a Saturday morning. I've had a pretty tough week. So it's time for an adventure. So um, I've stopped here at uh, Sukhumvit Soy 101 slash one for a cup of coffee. This, in my opinion, is the best coffee shop in uh, this whole area. This is like Punawiti, Udom Suk, around that area. Uh, it's called Ministry of Roasters and it's not only a coffee shop but they roast their own beans and it's also a coffee education center as well so uh, it is without question the best place if you like a good coffee this is the place you need to come after two outstanding coffees I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna put it out there this here is uh, Bangkok's best coffee shop I've only been in Bangkok for a year but of all the coffee I've tasted in my opinion this is Bangkok's best that's well worth your uh, well worth checking this place out uh, while I was having my two delicious cappuccinos I've been thinking about what I'm actually going to do today and uh, I think I need to get my daughter out of the house. She uh, spends way too much time on the iPad indoors so I think I've just looked up Google Maps and not far from here is Sri Nakarin and there's a really big park, Raman 9, so I might take her there this afternoon and then I also noticed close to that is the uh, big market, the Talot Krot Phai Sri Nakarin. Uh, it's called a, a train train market. I'm going to go and have a look at that. I'll, I'll take, I'll go there for dinner. I think so. Park in the afternoon, and uh, park in the afternoon, and then after we've burned up all our energy, we'll go to the markets for dinner. The other thing I've just noticed is just how filthy my car is. It's. I need to wash this car. I mean, I've even got coffee stains on the top from when I put my coffee cup there in the morning and unlock and get into my car. So I need, it's time to wash this car. Time to give my car a little bit of TLC. Uh, so car wash, park, and then Talot Hrot Phai Sri Nakarin. That's my plan today. Let's see how it all unfolds. cool feature for the kids a a hedge a hedge maze it's really nice good fun I I am a bit lost but that's that's how it's designed I guess yes yeah, good fun great lots of people having fun here I like it found a young lady cheating. She's cutting through the hedges. Two young ladies cheating. Hey, it's, 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 it's there. And remind me never to play these two girls in Monopoly. Uh, 
playground equipment. Playground equipment for the kiddies. And it's about uh, 5 p.m. so it's a perfect time for families to come out and enjoy all the playground equipment. And then just beyond the playground equipment, there's actually some gym facilities as well. And there's a lot of people out over there working out, getting fit on the outdoor gym equipment. There's plenty of life here in the park. It's really, really nice. Really nice place to be in the afternoon. We've even got a lot of birds as well. Birds chirping, singing, which is uh, understandable. It, I believe um, being Bangkok's largest park with a massive uh, uh, lake here as well and a marshland that it's actually one of the one of the uh, great places to come bird watching uh, within such close proximity to the capital Bangkok so if you're into bird watching this is a good place to come I'm at the magnificent Suan Luang Park, and this is also known as the Rama 9 Park. Now, this was built in 87, 1987, and it was to commemorate uh, the King Rama 9's, uh, what was it, 60th, 60th birthday, which is a significant number in Thailand, in Asia, and China, because uh, if you look at the, uh, the uh, what do you call the Chinese zodiac, it's in a 12 cycle, so in, so in the West, we often talk about the seven-year itch, seven-year cycles, uh, but in Asia, it's 12 years is the, is the key number. So this was the fifth cycle, uh, commemorating the fifth cycle of King Rama IX. Uh, now, this park is massive. It's the largest park in all of Bangkok. It's 80 rai. Now, Thais measure, um, measure land by rai, and I've got no idea what a rai is. The only rye I know is rye bread. And I think uh, it was uh, Don McLean saying something about drinking whiskey and rye, singing this will be the day that I die. So they're the only rye I actually understand. However, I did just look it up and it's 80 hectares. So hectares I, I understand, but rye, I don't quite understand. But needless to say, it's a massive park. So this is the largest park in Bangkok. Um, and, and it's yeah, really, really nice. Uh, it's very, very well kept. Uh, plenty of people here. And that building over my shoulder, I'd like to go and have a look at that. Uh, there's nine, there's nine uh, displays in, in, inside that building and, and they're commemorating the life of King Rama IX. So, I'm going to wander over there and hopefully I get there in time before it shuts so I can have a look. Maybe I'll pat, catch one of these uh, one of these paddle battle boats over. So I just discovered that in December there is a massive flower show here. Uh, so I just missed that, sadly. Uh, but it's uh, it's been running ev every year since 87, since this park was founded. Uh, now this park, so I'm just reading here, so I've got plenty to explore, so I'm just studying up here about the park. There's actually seven distinct areas. Uh, the first one is the Garden of the Great King, and that's where that pavilion is there. And in that pavilion there is, there's exhibits uh, that are all about the King, Rama Nine. Uh, artifacts and stories and images all about Rama Nine's life. Uh, the second area is Botanical Garden and this is a, a place for research as well. So I was doing a little bit of research um, about the bird life here. There's actually a guy named Nick Upton I've, I've stumbled upon. So he's, he's got a website which uh, is dedicated to all the bird life that's found in Thailand. He's also got a YouTube channel which uh, features bird watching and birds from not only Thailand, other places in in the world. Um, and he's actually got a big checklist of the different birds that you can actually see in this park. Um, so that's, if, if you're interested in that, check out Nick Upton. 
Um, uh, but this, this, this is one of the one of the prime areas for bird watching uh, in the in Bangkok itself. So if, if that's your cup of tea, then check out check out his website and visit this park. It'll be well worth your trouble. Coppersmith barbet is one of the birds uh, that you can find in this park. There's also an a ashy drongo. I love the sound of that bird, the drongo. You can find yourself a drongo here as well. It's a very, I, I like saying that with my Aussie accent. In fact, that's a very common kind of, uh, what do you call, when you want to put somebody down, you call them a drongo. You're flaming drongo. So if you want to see a flaming drongo, come to this park. So it was my intention to go and explore this whole park, all 500 rye of this park. However, I brought my wife and daughter and they're stuck in the playground. So I don't know whether to leave them or whether to drag them along. You know what, I think I've just answered my own question. I think I'll leave them and I'll go and explore my own. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say, however, I did achieve my goal. My goal was to get my daughter off the iPad and out of the house. And I'm pleased to say that's happening. So if she's having a fun time, uh, I'm going to leave her there and I'm going to explore this park and see what I can find. But I must say it's a marvellous park. This is, um, I can't help but feel really, uh, really quite peaceful and relaxed here. Uh, you know, I want to use the word tranquil. Uh, there are people here, but it's just, it, you know, you, you kind of don't know you're in Bangkok. Uh, if you want to exercise, you can. If you want to get the heart pumping, you want to have a picnic, you can. You want to have time with your, your family. You want to bird watch. You want to look at some plants. It's all here in this park. It's uh, really marvellous. Nice cool temperatures as well. Yeah, I like it. Six o'clock on the dot here in Bangkok and they play the national anthem and everyone in the whole park stands to attention. It's quite uh, remarkable when you the kind of the pride and respect that uh, the Thai the Thais have for their country the national anthem uh, just comparing it to other countries I've been in and lived lived in uh, the Thais definitely show the utmost respect uh, for their for their nation yeah, it's quite moving to see it for, for for an outsider for a falang but the first time to see a really really busy place everyone stops still even in the middle of exercising stop still stand to attention yeah, it's quite quite remarkable anyway this um the king rama 9 pavilion is closed so I'm going to have to come back another time because I'm actually really, really interested in having a look at the nine different sections, the nine sections that are in this pavilion, uh, and learning more about King Rama IX because uh, he had a big impact on. Uh, he was a, the, the longest reigning monarch in Thailand, and he had a big impact, and it was well respected. Uh, so I'd like to learn more about him. And this seems like a fantastic place to come back and learn about King Rama IX. So I've been in this park for about two hours and I've come to the conclusion that 500 rye is a very large piece of land. The fact is that I've kind of seen nothing. There were seven designated areas. Uh, I've seen nothing, but I've actually, at the same time, I've seen a lot. Uh, it's just been nice walking around the big reservoir and seeing the, uh, the plants and the flowers and also people. Great, great, great place for people watching, but I'd certainly have to come back here and actually I think I'll have to come back with a plan and actually go to the different garden areas uh, so I can see the, uh, the, the different sections, the, the seven distinct different sections 
here in Ramanine Park. But yeah, it's not too far. I mean, from central Bangkok, uh, it's actually not too far. The easiest way to get here is from Udom Suk. If you get the BTS to Udom Suk, and then you can catch a taxi out here. But uh, um, as light fades, I think this park is open till about seven. So uh, with that in mind, oh, this beautiful crane. The bird life at Ramanine Park. Uh, yes, as we as the light fades, I'm going to shift. I might start heading back to find, collect my family from the from the playground, and then I uh, will head to Rot Talot Rot Fai Market, the train market. So I'm going to head to the train market now for dinner and a bit of shopping. Uh, it's time that time of the night. I don't need to be too hard on myself for not. Uh, getting to see all the places, all the gardens here. Um, when you come to a park, you kind of remember that you don't need an agenda. Just come and be, whether you're a kid, middle-aged, teenager, university student, grandparent. You know, places, parks are like, wonderful places just to be, be present. And plenty of things to look at here, plenty of stimulation, but not a assault on the uh, sensors. It's just a very nice place to be. Watch the sunset. It's a great, great Saturday afternoon. I'm at Talot Rot Fai Market, and this is a Sri Nakarin uh, branch. Now, the Talot Rot Fai Market story begins in 2011. Talat is market, Rot Fai means train. So this literally, the translation is train market. So the first train market began in 2011, and it was started by a gentleman who was a antiques dealer. So it started, it started on a land that was leased from the SRT, which is the Thailand's railway company. Uh, and it was, it was in an area which was not too far from Chattachak Market, in, in an area which is close to the BTS station, Sapan, Kwai and Mog Chit. So the lease started there, and uh, the market was going quite well. Uh, it was very run down, it was very rugged, it was quite rustic, as you can imagine, it was like an abandoned block, uh, plot of land. Uh, so it had very, very kind of a rustic feel to it back, way back when it first started. A lot of cool bikes in uh, at this market. Uh, so that's where it began. Uh, then. Uh, what happened in 2013, the lease uh, ran out. So the, the land that was leased, the SRT said we need that land again because they went on to develop it and was just re recently opened is the Bang Su terminal for the bus and the train. So this is what, uh, way back in 2013, that was the plan. So they, they reclaimed the land and they've developed it. And now in, now in 21, uh, 2021, is when finally this uh, Bang Sur is open and ready for business. And also, coincidentally, in 2021, 2022 is when the uh, Hua Lampang station is now going to be shut down as closed. And all the main rail and bus uh, transit is going to be happening at this Bang Sur area, which is the original Talot Rot Fai market. So after that early, early, uh, early happened, so from 2011 to 2013, when Talot Rot Fai started, 
They then had to find a scramble to find a new location, which is where we are here today at the Sri Nakarun area. So Talot Rot Fai Market uh, in the Sri Nakarin area, which is we're just behind the Seekum Seekum shopping mall. This is an abandoned like a bland and abandoned plot of land, which was which is where the Rot Fai Market then moved to. There's no trains in this area, but the name stuck. Talot Rot Fai Market, uh, that name stuck, and it's still got the same kind of characteristics as the original market, which is a lot of antiques and second hand. Now, what's really cool about this market is not only has the uh, second-hand and antique feel, but it's got it's a fantastic market. Uh, there's also fantastic restaurants, and it's usually also the place where there's a lot of live music. So it's a really great place to to come and be, uh, and come and hang out. Uh, sadly, now with the, during the pandemic, because of the alcohol laws, there's no live music. So. It's not quite the party hangout place that it, it was before, pre-pandemic, but it's still a great place to come. Now, what's really unique about this market is how many, uh, how all the antiques, but also some of the old cars as well. There's some fantastic cars and motorcycles here. They really, it's, just, it's like a museum. It, 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 if you love cars and motorcycles, this is the market you've got to come to. But it's not only got old cars in like a museum area, but it's um, there's also it's a place where uh, motorcycle enthusiasts, car enthusiasts bring their cars. And 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 tonight I've noticed a lot of motorcycles and and cars coming into coming into the market. So I'm going to go and check that out. found a toy shop that's just got the creepiest toys. I think it's uh, the place where if you wanted to make a horror movie, this is where you'd get your props from. It's, uh, it's freaky. So after, so the original Talot Rot Fai was out at Bang Su area, and then it uh, had to close, and then it relocated to here, Sri Nakarin area. But the success here, uh, the success of this market, uh, prompted the opening of another Talot Rot Fai, which was at Ratchada, Ratchada area, and that was really popular. That was probably more popular with the tourists, whereas this Sri Nakarin is a lot more popular with the locals. So I think the location had a lot to do with that. Uh, but just recently, during the during 2021, uh, the Ratchada branch has closed. So uh, the rumors were circulating that it closed forever. However, just recently, a new market has opened up. So that site, the Ratchada site, which I absolutely love, it was a really good, uh, good place for uh, a, a Saturday night or a Friday night out because they had this area where they had a lot of live bands and music, and they also had plenty of places to watch football. But it wasn't only in the in the in the area where there was restaurants and pubs. They, it was also same as here. It was, it was kind of like a showcase of, of of cool motorcycles. So if you had a shitty old motorcycle, you had to park it outside the market. But if you had a good bike, you're allowed to park it inside. So at Ratchada, it was like a bike show there as well. So I really loved the vibe there. There was fantastic music great motorcycles, plenty of food, plenty of life, and it was a really, really good location as well. So I'm really, really sad that that location is closed down. 
However, just opposite the road near Central Shopping, there's a shopping complex called Central. They've opened up a new market, which is owned, uh, operated by the same um, uh, group as Talot Rock Fi. But they're not calling it Talot Rock Fi, it's called, it's called John, John, John Market, I think. market in the Ratchet area is called John Fair, so I guess they are tapping into that John uh, name, so they're hanging on to that little bit of history. However, uh, from what I could see, it's a very clean and tidy, sophisticated market. I don't think it's got any of the antiques or the second-hand kind of uh, fair that they have at this market, so this is why it's this market's so dear to me because of all the second-hand goods and the antiques and the cars and the motorcycles. But anyway, I do need to check out this John Fairs, which is one of the new markets. Uh, so I'll do that in a future video. But I tell you what, it's, got to be, it's hard to beat this one. In my opinion, this night market is the best night market in Bangkok. Uh, it's without question the coolest one. Um, so I would recommend you definitely check this one out if you if you have the opportunity. It's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, but Friday night and Saturday nights are the best nights to come here. And I'm curious to come back here when the alcohol uh, laws have changed because there's no live music here at the moment. So pubs can't sell any uh, alcohol at the moment, so it's only restaurants. So it's there's no really no real nightlife here at the moment. But I think if I come back in six months um, or 12 months I think this the 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 live music will be back um, and it'll even be more reason to come and enjoy this cool market but this is a, this is a great market I love coming here I'm, um, I just get lost wandering around there looking looking at the shoes and secondhand clothes and, and all the antiques it's just a fantastic market so as I conclude today, that was a wonderful day out and fantastic night at the market. It rekindled my love for the vehicle. I need to show my my uh, Toyota a lot more TLC. I've been uh, inspired since coming to this market. I've also been inspired to go to the market more often. I'm coming back here again, but I'm also going to explore some mar other markets, night markets uh, in Bangkok, because I absolutely love the markets, particularly the ones with the antiques and the secondhand stuff and the food as well. So what a great night and day out.